trouble. Eyes in trouble as we take our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. And as you turn to Genesis 3 6 and realize that I, E-Y-E, is in the King James Bible 116 times. Eyes, E-Y-E-S, 501 times in the King James Bible. As we take our Bibles to Genesis 3, chapter 6, where sin began, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. We have a thing called optical illusions. Listen, magic plays on the uh, optical illusions. And so does television. Now we're not going to talk about television, but we're going to talk about television. What we're going to talk about is what God wants me and you to know about our eyeballs. And since majority of human beings saved or lost, spend most of their time in America in front of the television, we need to be careful about television. But we're not going to talk about television. We're going to talk about eyeballs. The worst thing man has, according to James, is his tongue. He says that the tongue can no man tame. We can tame lions, monkeys, and dogs to do tricks, to work in a circus, to do all kinds of things. But we cannot tame the tongue. There are things that you in your lifetime that you have said something that you wish you never said. But once it escapes out of the mouth, you can't draw it back. What's the next thing? Eyes and ears. Looking at the senses, that five senses we have. Feel, taste, smell, see, hear. Which order? Whichever the devil can use to find your weakness. Now, not all Christians are the same. Not all sinners are the same. What God puts into man is we're not robots. Satan may be able to put something before your eyes that will attract you, but will have no bearing on my life. Satan can put a can of beer in front of me, and I'm not going to be tempted. As a matter of fact, if that can of beer is open, the smell is, makes me disgust. Whereas there's probably a Christian out there, if there was an open beer, they'd be tempted. They'd be wanting. Now, there are things in my life that the devil uses my five senses that would not attract you. And what we need to look at in our life is out of our five senses of touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing, what can Satan use to cause us to sin? Well, one thing we learn from the book of James is everyone has a mouth problem. Sooner or later, that tongue's going, if you're shy, if you don't talk, or whatever, eventually you're going to say something that was uncalled for. Evidently, one sometime your mouth is going to get you to sin. And not everyone has eye trouble. There are some people out there that you can put things in front of and it's not going to bother them. There are Christians out there who do not watch TV, do not go to movies. Amen. They can look at a billboard like big deal and turn away. 
and not everybody has ear trouble. I despise when I hear rock, rap, <coughs> excuse me, country, and all other junk. I despise that. My ears don't get attracted. But if I'm in a restaurant, I'll give you an illustration. If I'm in a grocery store and they're playing that music over the, the PA system and that song that when I was a child, when I was a teenager growing up, that song that comes over the thing that I haven't heard in years and I'm sitting there, next thing you know, I'm humming or I'm singing that old music. Ah, you see, Satan has captured. He put that old song back in my ear and got me listening. Now, one can look at an auto accident and say, oh, that was cool. Another would say, well, was anybody hurt? Well, another one would, well, I hope they have insurance. Another one would say, you know, that... Idiot should never have made that maneuver. And when a cop calls upon the witnesses of the auto accident, there's going to be different stories told because there are people in different positions that saw the accident in a different point of view and a whole set of eyes. And the officer's job is to take the witnesses and put the whole picture into what happened. It's not, I'm saying that somebody has lied. Probably did. It's just they saw it from a different angle. They saw it in a different thing. And they realize that you can look at something and the person next to you probably never even saw it or who cares. Now Genesis 3.6 the woman saw that the tree was good for food. She didn't taste. There's no taste. There's no hearing unless you want to count listening to Satan. There's no touch. Don't know if there was a smell. So the first trouble... For this study is eyes, but the first trouble, look at verse 2. And the woman said, see the big mouth is the first trouble. She talks to Satan. Should have been talking to God or her husband. And then the eyeballs. Well, we already know by James, everyone has a tongue problem. So what is the next big trouble? The eyeballs. Eve saw, and what was the problem? What do we see in Genesis chapter 3 that we see today in 2013? The serpent, the devil, put a little advertising into her life. Well, me and my family, we only watch family television only. Well, what about the advertising, the, the ads, the commercials while you're watching that family little program? What about the nice little pretty horses selling beer? The pretty horses. Well, little girls love horses. Now that's got her attention there. And now it's got her attention to the beer. And they're going to use women in the commercial. Well, you attracted your little boy because, you know. And now he's looking at a woman and like he shouldn't not be. And he's looking at beer. How about those slick ads for the automobiles with a very fine print that you can't see nothing? half-dressed females to try to get the man's attention. And we can go on and on and on and on and on and on. Bright colors. 
you know, making, listen, those hamburgers and those, those food items that you see, they're not real. They are wax, lipstick, and whatever they can use. You, you check it out. Those are not real food. When I was working for a donut shop one time, uh, third shift, I had a woman come through the drive through She wanted this brand new sandwich that had just been advertised on the television set. This is a true story. Comes to the drive through I want one of them sandwiches I just saw. Okay, I prepared it. I gave her to her. She opened up the bag. Well, that's not how it looked on television. No, it don't. No, it's not. It's a lie, John 844. Don't come crying to the pastor after your children just got himself into debt buying a house or a car without reading the fine print because we watch family television. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Oh, it's innocent. No, it's not. It wasn't innocent for Eve to be watching what Satan was putting before her. And you don't even know because you know what? You're not seeing the television. You're not seeing life through the eyeballs of your wife and your children. You are seeing it through your eyes. You don't know what the effect it's showing upon your family. And you don't know what Satan knows about your family and what you put before their eyes. Be very careful. You might take your children or your family somewhere, and there might be something there that absolutely doesn't bother you one bit. But what about your family? What is Satan doing? He had to make it look good. Or else Eve would not. And that's the whole thing of advertising. We have to make it look good, because if we don't, we're not going to get paid because the products wouldn't be sold. We've got to use colors and symbols and pictures and everything. Listen, you got today, you got to get a preacher dressed up in a monkey suit for you to come out and hear him because you won't listen to him in sneakers and blue jeans and a. What, you there to look at the, the pretty boy Floyd, or you there to hear the word? What's the monkey suit have to do with anything? And it's funny how you, you want the preacher to dress up in a monkey suit, but you don't come dressed up yourself. Well, if the preacher comes like you, then... The pictures and the ads are not what they are. You need to get that. You need to know that they are lying to you. It also said it was pleasant to the eyes. A picture from a Christmas card with falling so snow and snow on the ground is beautiful. Well, have you ever tried to drive on the snow? Have you ever tried to drive on the ice? It's not beautiful. A Christmas card beauty looking at the snow through the windshield, not beauty. Pleasant. Pleasure, pleasing, agreeable. Now, that's all positive. Those are happy words. But is it? Read verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. Their eyes are open. You know what happens in the next chapter? Murder. They watched a son's funeral. They see sin as it is now against God. They have to watch God 
Drive them out of the garden. Watch goodbye to the garden. They have to see each other in their nakedness now, which was not ashamed. But now he is ashamed. Now nakedness is pornography. Do I need to mention or just take for granted how much the pornography market, magazines, uh, videos, films, cassette, uh, whatever. It's a market out there, a pornography from A to Z. It's a market that even Bible-believing pastors, King James men, have fallen. <coughs> How many Christians out there have seen things with their eyes that they have never, should have never seen? People, places, and things. Interesting colors are used for products. Red, white, and blue. Neon signs. A sign that says sale. 10% off. And we mark it up 15% before you come. The fall of man began with the big mouth and it, it continued with the eyeballs. And it was set before man as an attraction by Satan and it is called advertisement. Satan taught and showed man an interesting thing that they would probably never had their eyes on. But he made it known by his words and by sight. Radio, in the time of radio, wasn't that bad. You couldn't see. You could hear but wasn't really seen. Today, as you get into the movies and television and all that, it's put right in front of your eyeballs. Adam and Eve didn't need a black and white or a color TV. It was right there live. What's the difference? You're saying today, why are all these children being killed in these schools? Why is all this destruction happening? Why, why, why? Because you got a computer screen, you got a television screen showing these people day after day after day after day murder and death, murder and death, murder and death, and all they're doing is doing what they've been watching. You've been teaching it to the kids all this time, now you're reaping. And you don't like it. And we're going to get into more. Second Samuel 11. You've been putting it before the children's eyes for a long time. Second Samuel 11. And all Satan has been doing with the world is this. Oh, it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. He covers it up. And listen, television and, and computers have gotten worse, not better. Video games. And Satan has lied. You don't press a button, game over, and restart. Second Samuel 11, 2. That means you knew I was going to go here. And it came to pass in an evening tide, I guess you would call that prime time today, David arose from off his bed, let's read verse 1, and it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. 
And it came to pass in the eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now notice the Bible does not say she was naked. It says that she was washing herself. It is your filthy mind that you put Bathsheba with no clothes on. Where did you get that picture from? I wonder. The Bible does not say nakedness. It says she was washing herself. She could have been washing her hands. But your own filthy mind and what you put your eyeballs to, you thought instantly that she was there she was. First of all, David was not where he was supposed to be. You do not belong in front of a television set with your family. You need to be in front of your Bible, open up with your family, and reading. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. David should have been on the battlefield. You know where you're supposed to be, Christian? You're supposed to be on the battlefield. We are soldiers for Christ. We are told to stand. We are told to fight. We are told to go. We're never told to sit. He could not sleep, so he went for a walk. Well, that's okay. How many times have you gotten up in the middle of the night? You know, you go, go use the facilities or, you know, get yourself a, a soda or a drink. Maybe a, you heard a noise or something. That's okay. He saw a woman was washing herself. What? What's wrong there? Maybe she was by the well. Maybe she, you know, her kitchen window was open. Like I said, washing her hands. Whatever it is. What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. Look at this. <coughs> Scripture says in verse 2. The woman was very beautiful to look upon. Oh, that's the problem. David didn't just see an innocent look. So if you drive by the same perverted billboard, you and your wife are chilling, you may be in trouble like David. The Scripture's point to the fact is that David saw her washing herself and he turned and said, wow, she's beautiful. You say that, that advertisement on the television doesn't bother you. What about your family? Maybe they take that second look and say, hmm. Maybe you are in debt with your bills because of that television set. You got your wife looking at, wow, I need that now. You know, the biggest program that has put people in debt, as far as I know, is that home shopping network. When that first came out, man, people were just buying after buying after buying after buying. They bought so much, they didn't realize that they were going over what they had in the checkbook. So David saw a woman washing. He looked twice to see that she was beautiful. So you can see a woman walking down the beach, and you can see, hey, look at that, it's a stream bikini. Well, how'd you know that? Yeah, how did you know that? The pornographic. It took two views to be porno. you working on your computer, you type in that thing comes up, boom, get rid of it. Because that first look at the, it's the, oh, what is that? David had eye trouble, and I'm not talking about glasses, because he had wives, and I mean E.S., You ever been at work? 
You're doing your job there, and a woman walks by, and you take out. Bingo. Why would you take that second look? Well, I wanted to see if it was. No. Listen, we're men here. There are certain parts of a body of a woman that a man looks at, and whatever you are attracted to caught your attention to make you make that other look, and that other look was a sin. You see pornographic in 2 Samuel 11 2 when David took the second look. Pornographic was when Eve took a look at that fruit. She saw the fruit and then, oh, look at it. It looks much prettier now. You say, well, there was no nudity or that. Yeah, but what happened as a result of that? Their nakedness became a sin, didn't it? See, we think of pornographic as naked women and all the naked guys and triple X. No, pornographic is just sin with the eyeballs, no matter if it involves sex or not. Pornographic can be, hey, I'm looking at it. I can't afford it, but I'm still going to buy it. Wasting, on you, wasting your money on things that you don't need, but since it's been put in front of your eyeballs, it's been attractive you got to go out and get it and don't tell me it happens. God has shown me that it does happen. Now we're going to ask Jesus in Matthew 5, 28. See, we can't just put the word pornographic on nakedness because then we get rid of the whole sin. You could be a preacher in a pulpit and say, pornographic, pornographic, pornographic. And, you know, they're thinking nakedness, nakedness, nakedness. And you could be sitting back wasting your money on buying a new and approved product and all that new and improved about it is they put a brand new sticker on it. It's the same old product with just a new label. Raised up two more bucks. Or I can look at it and say, hey, i got to have that because that's my hobby. And I've got to get that t-shirt. I've got to get that, that whatever it is that you like and collect because it's the new one on the, on the block. Shouldn't that be pornographic? If you got an obsession... With something that you got to have, the devil's got to put in front of your eyeball and say, i got to have more. It's like eating. When your eyes see something that you like and it's delicious food that you like, your eyes see it. And you, isn't that pornographic? Isn't that like someone else with a naked woman or a naked man? That they just got to this oozy over it like you would do for a pizza or a sandwich or... Whatever collectible thing. Isn't lust lust? All right, let's call this sin then. Let's forget pornographic. And let's call the Bible word. Lust. You know what James says? I believe it's... No, Paul says about lust. Have I not known coveted? Or have I not known... No, Paul says... And I'm misquoting. Forgive me, Lord. I would not have known covet or lust. I have not known lust, except I, thou shalt not covet. It's in there. Paul matches, this is the point, Paul matches lust and covet together. Lust and covet are two equal words in the Bible, but we put nice little pretty names on it. Pornographic. See, you can't find pornographic in the Bible. Yes, I can. Lust and coveting. We just saw David do it. We just saw Eve do it. Now, let's ask Jesus, shall we? Matthew 5, 28. Jesus, what do you say about this subject? But I say unto you, Jesus speaking, if you got a red letter Bible, this is red letter. Wish my Bible had it, but don't. That whosoever... Now, didn't he just bring 2013 to me? Had before June this year, if I read whosoever, I just read those words, whosoever, okay. 
But after June of 2013, I've got, I've got this verse down. Jesus is a prophet. Did you know that? Well, let's read the verse. Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her in his heart. Have you ever committed adultery? Oh, no, I've never slept on my wife. I've been faithful to my marriage. Have you ever looked on a woman to lust after her? Have you, like David, ever taken that second look? You know, there's a woman. She's walking on the beach. Oh, look at that. She's got a stream bikini. How'd you know? How'd you know what color her, her bikini was? How'd you know she was in a bikini? You just committed adultery by the word of Jesus Christ. You can't get out of it. Jesus said you lust after it. Listen, I see a woman walk by. David saw the woman washing herself, washing herself, but she was a beautiful woman. That was a second look. That beauty was, hey, I like this. Yeah. And you seen that woman in a bikini, you seen that woman in short shorts, whatever she whatever that part of the body has attracted your attention, you have now committed adultery by the word of Jesus Christ. And notice how Jesus says, whosoever. That's ma male, married, or not married. Could be also female today. Now that sodomites can get married. If a lesbian looks at a woman to lust after, she's committed adultery. Even if it is the same sex. So now are you going to be charged with same sex? Or sodomy, give it the real name. Now you are adultery sodomy. For somebody you shouldn't have been looking at if you're a woman. How's that? Now look at this. I say unto you, who sort of looking upon a woman? David looked upon a woman, didn't he? Yes, he did. He saw her, she was washing herself. To lust after. Remember what I said what Paul said about lust? Lust is coming. Ooh, I want her. You got it. What did David want to do with Bathsheba? He wanted her. He took that look purposely, that other look. And you took that other look because you wanted something. You wanted the thrill of taking that other look to see the bikini, to see how beautiful she is, see whatever it is that that woman caught your eye. You know how you get up? You know how the man got in big trouble? He's walking down the street with this woman he's about to marry. And he tells her, say, listen, you are the most beautiful woman in the world. She turns around and says, no, my sister behind me is more beautiful. And the guy turned. You got him. I thought she was the most beautiful. He didn't need to turn if, if his words were true. Jesus knows. And there are people out there, oh, you can't be a pastor because you've been married twice. Uh. Yeah. But how much adultery have you done in your life just by looking and lusting? How about let's sing the song, Look and Lust. In the Bible, you know, the, the hymn is Look and Live. How about Look and Lust? And you put that junk in front of your family. Well, it don't bother me. What about your family? What if it doesn't bother you? What if the, the stuff that comes up on your computer makes you look again? Have you confessed the sin of adultery, my friend? And this goes for the male, and this goes for the woman, too. Now, we're not done with this verse. Has committed adultery with her. Already in his heart. It was in your heart. But with her. Here's something else, woman. If you dress the way you do and you want men's attention, you want men to look at you because you paint up that body like a hussy. I don't care if you're a Christian. You're a Christian hussy. God holds you accountable for having the men take a look at that part of the body that you're advertising. 
And don't tell me you're not advertising because where do they put all the advertising on the, on the women today? You see it on the chest and you see it on the butt. You don't spell it anymore? Satan has got you men so perverted that you will look at a woman's chest to read the advertisement and to look at her goods. Why do you think they put those, those the stupidest words on the women's butts? For you men to look, because you know some of you men out there are butt men. And you look, and you lust. Shall we sing to him? It's eye trouble. It's always been eye trouble. And right behind your eyes is what? For some of you, emptiness and spider webs, but for most, it's your mind and your thoughts. And when you have vision, a picture in your head, in most cases, it will never be forgotten. I say most cases, there are medical things out there like Alzheimer's, but even still, I'm wondering in the back of an Alzheimer's mind and thoughts, what actually is there? What can that person remember and not remember? Can he remember those pictures? We've got to guard our eyes. The devil knows. We've already said that every person in this world has a mouth trouble, according to James. Save, save or lost. Next is everyone has an eye trouble. There's only one person that, that doesn't have an eye trouble. is one that is blind. And when you look upon a woman, Jesus said, it's the same thing as David. And you take that second look and there is the sin, there is the lust. Listen, we see women all every day long. That's not a sin. You see women every Sunday in church. That's, that's not a sin. But what about that one woman that comes dressed like she does? Ha, ha, ha. That's a sin. And she caused it. Jezebel painted her face to get Jehu's, you know, one in <laughs> bat the eyelashes and all that. I think that Eve saw that tree every day. I don't know. David seen women every day. But then came along advertising. Walk down the laundry detergent aisle next time you go grocery shop with your wife. Just walk down it. Then sit down in front of the television set and wait for a laundry commercial to come on. Then you'll, hey, I remember. That was like on the third show. See? Had not that television brought it to be, you would never even know. Well, I just went down laundry to turn it out. Who cares? And we won't get into jingles and all that. But God has warned us about our eyes and the stories we're looking at because this is a object that Satan uses and the Bible says something about we're not ignorant of his devices Joshua 7:21 Joshua 7:21 I mean we can run this all day and night Joshua 7.21 Achan has explained himself after his sin. After men have died for his sin. Eve and Adam has caused death. The wages of sin is death. Bathsheba's husband Uriah was killed along with army men. Because of, because of David's sin. 
Men in the ministry, men in church have been ruined by what women have worn to catch men's attention. Eyeballs are a deadly effect of sin that can cause destruction. If you don't guard your eyes. In verse 21, Joshua 7. When I saw. Call me a liar. Among the spoils, a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them. Who cares what Achan saw? This would be the only battle that Joshua would lose. Because of what Achan saw. Battle? Wasn't David supposed to be on the battlefield? Didn't I say that the Christians on the battlefield? Many Israelites died because of this. And Achan's entire family was put to death for this sin. Your eyes can get your family and your church into big trouble. It was a garment, silver, and gold. What a great deal. I just got to have it. I just got to go fishing. See what I caught? So you rush out and buy it on credit. Now you got to skip church to go work for what you could afford. Sound familiar? Am I ringing your ding-a-ling bell? You ding-dong? I don't hear this kind of pre- You need to. You skip tithing to pay. You forfeit the family to care for it. Well, I ain't got time for you guys. I got barnacles on the ball I got to scrape off. I got to work on Saturday just to pay the payment for that so I can enjoy it on Sunday. The one day, two hours I get to be on it. What do you guys want? Don't tell me. I've lived this life. Once there was a problem, and now you're mad at everybody for it. You're blaming everybody. Your life is upsetting. It's falling around. Why? Because you saw whatever that thing is, person, place, or thing. Joshua, the leader, the Israelites, his family, were all angry at this man because of his sin. He caused the problem. Aiken's eyes caused a big problem. Eve, her eyes caused her to sin. David, a baby, died. Uriah died in murder. Adultery. It cost some of his troops life. And it cost Joab's trust. In Matthew 5, 28, it breaks families and it ruins the trust. That spouse of yours is unable to trust you anymore. Well, I can forgive, but what about forgetting? It's always going to be in the back of the mind, what, what if, what if? Is he going to do it again, or is he looking again? And Thank God God will wash our sins away and forgets 
But be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever man sowed, that he shall also reap. The mistrust that you caused in your family, the mistrust that you caused in the church, the mistrust that you caused in the job, because of your eyeballs. You know how someone steals money from a job? They see the money and ooh. You know the biggest thing in employment today? Is they got cameras all around looking at you. Because they don't trust you. First John two sixteen. There are eyeballs everywhere. Government's watching you. Your employer's watching you. Your family's watching you. God is watching you. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Satan is watching you. And when you fail, and when you sin, your church is now watching you. And the world is watching. And if you're a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, the media will be like, watch this, watch him. Look how he failed. First John 2.16 Now these are the very tactics that Satan uses. There's only three tactics. And these three tactics will go a long way. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, capital F, but is of the world. Sin has only three foundations. All sin can be based footing and foundation on three events lust of the flesh sexual fleshy carnal activities music is fleshy if it makes the flesh feel good if your flesh your carnality likes it that's lust of the flesh where your music, your entertainment, lust of the eyes. And this is our topic. Eye trouble is one of the three or one third of the foundations of sin. You say, what are the other two? Mouth and ears. And ears, which we're not going to talk about, works right along with the eyes pride of life it's who you are what you are and where you are who I came from where I came from or what I am diplomas school race color creed Republican, Baptist, whatever. Eyes can get you into serious trouble. That young teenager, the young adult, has his eyes on that nice sporty red car with two seats, but he wants to get married and have children. His eyes are blinded that, you know, I'm going to need a vehicle with more seats, more fuel economy. The old man is down on his luck, ventures into a well-advertised casino where pictures, rates, words of winning, and light his eyes to pull that one-armed bandit. If I can take my quarter, I can win a billion dollars. Any normal person would know that the odds are against them, but Satan puts that advertising of light bulbs and, and advertising and sound effects to make you want to waste your money on something stupid.
that young lady's wooed over that hunk of a man who will turn out to be a nobody and a waste. But she just loves him. That person in the company has his eyes on higher and better, th and better things. But you don't see what it takes for him to get to that corporate ladder. Who he steps on. What he steps on. And where he steps on. Have you ever confessed the sins of your eyes? Have you ever prayed about the sin of your eyes? Have you even thought about your eyes? Ask God before you fall asleep at night, when you close your eyes in your dark room, to show you all the things that attracted your eyes that day. And ask God to forgive and to wash those visions out. But your brain and your mind has a great CD or video recorder, whatever you want to call it this day and age. And oh, how it will play it back. And those visions will keep coming. Even under the blood. Your eyes are something you need to think about. You need to pray about. You need to seek God about. And you need to guard. And you're not your eyes now. But the eyes of your family. Because you cannot look out your wife's eyeballs. You cannot look out the children's eyeballs you don't see what they see and you don't know what Satan knows what you think may be innocent in the hands and the tools of Satan can be deadly you may be feeding your family food and ammunition for Satan to use to destroy your family I hope you're doing this with prayer. I hope you seek God. And if you're angry, I hope you get it right with God. I love you. I want you to do right. This is why I'm doing these messages.